team. That's it. That's all I know. This is it. I'm trying to wait. Ah, uh, make sure as many people can get in here as they want. But that's going to be enough because I'm excited. <clears throat> All right. All right. So I know nothing. So thoughts. The only things that are left that really need looking at is ranged attacks, especially ones and minions, both kind of shit hoping that at least one of them is addressed i'm guessing ranged because minions i don't know why just i'm guessing ranged but those are the two that are left and legion did so incredibly well that i think they're going to stick to more of that idea and when i say that idea what i mean is not having to leave my maps to do things. So nothing like synthesis where you had to go and do stuff, nothing like delve where you've got different content. I'm expecting content inside the map that I don't have to leave for because that did incredibly well and it got incredibly well received. That's kind of all I've got. <laughs> so let's watch this, shall we? The Blight, a creeping black fungus that feeds on the will of its hosts. Pulsating with toxic blood, too dangerous to touch, too dangerous to ignore. Ooh. We must drain the eye core of this dark infection. Look, it's Fane's girlfriend. Husks will protect its core. So I build weapons, towers which conjure flames, chill the air, move the earth. Oh. Even so. Oh. I need your might. Look at the UI. And to the Look at the UI that doesn't cover the entire screen. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. And to the mighty. And to the mighty. That. That. That was a symbol. That was a symbol for League Uniques. Oh, they're sticking with that. Oh. Yes. That's a really good. Really good. I love that. It's black tendrils reaching for us. We will seek it out and purge it. Lol, spectral throw. Good luck. Yes, yes, the little item symbols. The blight is here, and we are the cure. Ooh, developer coming. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. Hi, Chris. In the Blight League, Sister yeah. Cassia is trying to stop the spread of the mind-controlling blight by destroying fungal growths. When attacked, the blight commands infected monsters to defend it. The monsters mindlessly follow the blight's tendrils, only attacking foes directly in their path. The infected are unusually tough, so you'll need to all the potions look different to exploit each monster's specific weaknesses. For each tendril lane you defend, a chest all the potions look different. Rewards. These rewards can include oils, which Sister Cassia can combine together to enchant certain items. Enchanted amulets? What the Lighted fuck are those? In larger pockets of infection, cleanse these for rewards, including unique items which can be enchanted with notable passive skills. In Path of Exile Blight, we also have a focus on giving you more control over when you run side content. Master missions now stack for later if you don't run them immediately. This expansion also contains yes. significant revamps to the Saboteur, Assassin, and Necromancer Ascendancy classes, as well as an additional bar of skill bindings. Check out Path of Exile Blight on September 6th. Okay, so real quick, just, just back in here a little. One. Fuck off. 
All these fucking potions look different, except the Quicksilver that looks exactly the same. The monsters mindlessly follow the Blight's tendrils, only attacking Look at them. directly in their path. The infected are unusually tough. So Second, and perhaps tough. the most pog thing here that I've seen so far is this. 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 Having the league mechanic interactable thing that doesn't take up my entire screen so I die. Super, super happy about that. Potions look great. So you will need to build defensive towers to exploit each monster's specific weaknesses. For each tendril lane you defend, a chest will appear with your rewards. These rewards can include oils, which Sister Cassia can combine together to enchant. Allocate quick step. Oh shit. Okay. All right. Okay. Certain items. Champion of the cause? What the fuck is that? Oh, 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 blighted maps contain. Oh, larger... shit. Best of with the fungal grove. Also, there's a new skill on the bar. Don't know what the fuck that is. Contain larger pockets of infection. Cleanse these for rewards, including unique items which can be enchanted with notable passive skills. All right, let's read. Let's read the rest of it. Let's read the rest of it. Oh yeah, you couldn't see. Right. Whoops. But check this out. There's a there's a skill here I've never seen before. Wait, let me back up and I'll move my camera. This one. Uh, where's my camera? This one right here. What the fuck is that? That is a new skill. Blighted maps contain larger pockets right? of infection. Cleanse these for rule. That's new. That's cool. Ah, uh, let's go. Let's go look through the rest of it. Let's get us some backing track. Nah, the new look on the potions looks amazing. Pretty sure you didn't watch the last few seconds of the video. Pretty sure I did. Let me, let me quickly check before I start reading through the rest of it. The Vex of Light on September 6th. I'll stack for later if you don't run them immediately. This yeah, expansion I watched the whole thing. significant revamps to the Saboteur, Assassin, and Necromancer Ascendancy classes, as well as an additional bar of skill bindings. Yeah. <laughs> Say what? I missed that the first time. How do you just put that in at the end like it's a little tiny little add-on? Oh yeah, and by the way, an extra bar of skill bindings just to fucking, just to fucking, what? What? How do you just chuck that in at the end? Just, oh, and by the way, the number one fucking quality of life thing we've wanted. What the fuck? Our skill bindings. What the fuck? Necromancer ascendancy classes, as well as an additional bar of skill bindings. Ah, oh, I'm so fucking hard right now. Okay, all right, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Ah. No, no, I'll read the rest of this. I'll read the rest of this. Let's stop the bed of deadly bright. As the temporary center contains blight, three revamp blah, 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 blah. skills, support gems, two old leagues being integrated into the core game, and a focus on giving you more freedom. Oh, okay. Well, that's Legion 
and synthesis then? Kind of has to be. The only thing missing. Sister Cassia is trying to stop the spread of mind controlling blight by destroying fungal growths. When attacked, the Black commands infected monsters to defend it. The monster mindlessly flows the Blight's tendrils, exposed directly in their path. The infected are usually tough, so you'll need to build defensive towers to exploit the monster's weaknesses. Okay. What do we got? See this? This is the bit I'm most excited about for the League. Having a League UI that's smooth and crisp and doesn't take up my whole screen and doesn't like when you're picking syndicate members and you die because something wanders in from off screen and then like takes a really slow long pot shot at you and kills you and you didn't see it i, I love this this is much better this is much better i'm really happy about that It's really cool. Cool. Kind of reverse breach. <laughs> you click a button and now mobs come in from the outside to the middle instead of the middle and expanding, but that's fine. This is an arsenal contains towers that chill, shock, stun, burn, and summon, empower, petrify, and debilitate. Choose places to upgrade your tower carefully and take advantage of both the terrain and the weakness of the infected monsters. These fast bite-sized tower defense encounters combined with passive exiles and intentional combat for tactical fun. Ooh. 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 Okay. So ring enchants that will affect our towers. Cool. Sending light maps, blah, 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 blah. blah. Endgame is not safe from the effects of blight either. Find blighted maps which contain gigantic blight encounters with dozens of lanes and some of the league's most valuable rewards. Oh, those are white map. Those are implicits on my maps. Affected with fungal growth, natural inhabitants of this area have been removed. Okay. All right. All right. I'm excited. Allocates Golem's blood. Isn't that the one in the middle of the Scion life wheel? No, that's Constitution. Where's Golem's blood? Ah, it's that one down there. Wow. Wow. Amongst other treasures, apply it yields oil, sister colors, and use to anoint your jewelry. Combine two oils to enchant a ring with a potent tower defense mark. Combine three oils to enchant your amulet with a notable, with any notable passive skill from the skill tree. The 12 oils will vary in rarity, with each combination of them granting a different result. Ooh. Ooh. So I'll be able to like guarantee I want Golem's blood. I'm in the top half of the tree. I would like to grab Golem's blood on my amulet. And that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Allocates inexorbitable sap and brutal blade. What's that one? Inexorbitable. Oh shit! Right, because that's a notable too. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay.
A secret eye. Yep. Anointable unique items. Four of the unique items. Four of the unique items exclusive to the Blight League from armor sets. That can also be anointed with notable passives. Combine with an notable amulet, the the wearer of this set can have up to five bonus notable passives at once. <laughs> Travel skills have increased cooldown. Mana regeneration while moving. Your movement speed is 150% of its base value. Say fucking what? Okay, all right, cool. You're no longer forced to run every master mission as soon as you encounter it or required to run arbitrary maps to complete your dailies. Significantly more of your mass of your missions are now earned through map completion and they can be run later by talking to the masters in your hideout missions accumulate indefinitely and you can run them whenever you have time on whichever map you choose oh no i haven't i would like to watch that as soon as i'm done reading through this <clears throat> we've also improved betrayal's reward made deeper depths e easier to access in delve and integrated legion and the boss fights from synthesis into the core game Ooh. i wish i could zoom out this far this is in the temple this is the temple room for legion that is definitely in the temple Wait, did I skip? Okay, nice new mind skill. Nice synthesis boss fight. That's cool. Haha, <laughs> 420. <laughs> nice. The Necromancer archetype. Okay. Summoners one of the blah blah blah. We have revamped many summoner mechanics and the witch's necromancer ascendancy. We have buffed the per gem level progression of many of the minion types, added new support gems that allow you to fine tune minion behavior, revamped the necromancer ascendancy. Feel like I already said that. Yep. I did introduce the carrion golem added a high level wand base that can roll powerful minion mods and have made many other changes to support the new skills that are available we have added an additional bar of skill bindings oh look at the carrion golem he's fucking cool look at him leaping Look at him leaping through the air. Also, check out this fucking life potion. God, they look cool now. That's cool. That's cool. Poison Assassin Archetype, okay. Poison Assassin, one of the most dominant playstyles in Path of Exile, is returning almost to its former glory. Light adds new poison themed support gems and a suit of five potent new poison themed skill gems, including Cobra Lash, which chains a poison projectile between your foes. The new elusive Mechanic supported by new ascendancy notables provides a powerful de defensive opportunity and means of escape while the changes to the perfect agony e-stone passives and multipliers from elements from crits ensure that poison assassin gets his mark 
Withering Step uses movement skill alongside any other skill. Instantly withers enemies around you. Mmm. Mmm. Cobra Lash. That looks cool. And chain multiple times between them. That looks cool. I don't know what that one is. I assume it's the new dash. Oh, you can't see it. Move your camera, dickhead. I don't know what this one is, but I assume it's the new dash. No, because he's got whirling blades there. All right, I don't know what that is, but it looks cool and I want it. The mine saboteur archetype. Feedback on mines that though strong felt clunky to use in blight, we've completely reworked mind mechanics from the ground up throw into a location rather than place to your feet mines now deploy more quickly and detonate in sequence mine skills now also reward you for detonating long sequences new and reworked mine support gems as well as the mobile skitter bots provide new avenues for explosive power all these additions are fully enhanced by the changes to the passive skill tree of the saboteur ascendancy class Okay, looks like I'm fucking making a miner first. Stormblast mine. This mine makes nearby enemies vulnerable to damage, which increases the power of shockwave when multiple are detonated at a time. That's cool. The Skitterbox Companion boosts your trap and mine damage, occasionally activating mines, then rearming them, or triggering multiple traps. Man, they're making me want to use little golems. Basically golems, right? Just for mines and traps. Damn, look at the mana potion. That's a new mine. <laughs> hey, boss. Alright, Legion Scarabs. Wait, what? Plus three level of all physical spell skill gems. Of all? Meaning... Meaning global? Meaning I can do a wield them and just have plus six to my six link chest. That's disgusting. That is disgusting. That is disgusting. Okay. Okay. Sure. Minions convert. Oh, you can convert 100% of minion damage to anything or physical damage anyway. That's cool. That's cool. Increases the cooldown recovery of travels per frenzy charge. Effect of elusive. Uh, your maximum frenzy charge is equal to your maximum power charges. That's cool. Yeah, pure fizz spells. Alternatively, Herald of Agony. Ooh, fated unique item. And an Elder Bone Helmet. Cool. Oh, look at this one. Right, okay, so those are the supporter packs. All right, where's Ziggy D's video? We gotta watch that. The blue one I want. I want the blue one. We must watch us a Ziggy D video.
Let me find that. Oh, thank you. G'day, I'm Ziggy D, and welcome to my review. Okay, let's watch it. G'day, I'm Ziggy D, and welcome to my reveal G'day, of Ziggy. Exiles 3.8 expansion, Blight. In this league, we'll join forces with Sister Cassia to destroy fungal growths that are mind-controlling the monsters of Rayclast. And we'll do it through the power of towers. That's right, Path of Exile is getting tower defense. Sister Cassia has a device that can purge the Blight, but she needs our help in defending it. Waves of mind-controlled slaves will travel along tendril paths and we must stop them before they destroy Cassia's device. The infected are imbued with unnatural toughness, but we'll be able to employ a variety of different towers to halt their progress. We can make towers to slow, distract and damage monsters exploiting their specific weaknesses with different elements. And of course, this is still Path of Exile, so we'll also be joining in on the combat ourselves. Tower placement, choices of upgrades, and cross-tower synergies will be important strategic decisions, and a successful defense will reveal a variety of rewards amongst the drained Blight Tendrils. In addition to the different varieties of loot and currency, we'll also be able to drain special oils from the Blights that can be combined together cool. to anoint rings and amulets with new enchantments. Anointing rings will add enchantments that aid in future Blight encounters, making our towers cheaper or more powerful. Anointing amulets, however, will add enchantments that allocate a notable passive from the skill tree, without needing to spend passive points or even path to it. With these anointed amulets, it'll be possible to add a notable passive to your build from anywhere on the skill tree. The anointing process with oils is deterministic, with each combination of three oils producing a different set outcome, and you'll be able to see which enchantment you'll get before you consume the oils. This means that it'll be far oh. easier to discover and use this system than previously yes. crafting mechanics. Once at endgame, players will be able to find blighted maps which contain one gigantic blight encounter. These tower defense maps have a much higher degree of difficulty than the regular random blight encounters, but also much greater rewards. Blighted maps can be crafted like regular maps, and they can also be anointed with oils to add additional special modifiers. Successful completion of these blighted tower defense maps will potentially yield higher level blighted maps and special blight unique items. In 3.8, there's going to be a set of four special blight uniques, with some of them having variants. These can be anointed with notable passive skills, just like the amulets. These new boots, the Stampede, have been anointed with cold-hearted calculation. But the choice of notable passive is yours. Why not add Constitution for 14% increased life, or Whispers of Doom for an additional curse? Anointed enchantments can be overridden and replaced with others if you change your mind. And oils can be traded up to more rare types of oil by trading 3 for 1 at the vendor. In addition to the four Blight Uniques and their variants, there will also be another 10 Uniques added to the game in 3.8, each aimed at being build-defining. The Triad Grip, for example, are a pair of gloves that can potentially fully convert minion physical damage into cold, fire, lightning, or even chaos with some luck in corruption. And in addition to these 14 new Uniques, there are a couple dozen existing Uniques being rebalanced, with six of them receiving significant overhauls. As with other recent expansions, Blight will also Look at the movement speed on those zombies. The three build archetypes. The first is the long-awaited Summoner Overhaul. 3.8 aims to fix many problems with the Summoner playstyle and revamp the Necromancer to be more powerful overall. You'll now be able to control the behavior of your minions using three new Look support go. gems. Any skill supported by these new support gems will cause your minions to act aggressively, defensively, or even focus fire on a specific target. In addition to this, skeletons, zombies, and spectres have been reworked to be much more powerful. Oh, he's using Queen's Escape. Damn. This makes them much less reliant on items and ascendancies to gain the bulk of their power. The goal here is to make your choices of build matter more for specialization and playstyle over raw power. For example, you can see in the footage here a player who has focused quite a bit on minion speed. There's a new minion called the Carrion Golem, which buffs and is in turn buffed by your other minions. 
In addition to this, there's going to be a new wand-based type found in specific Atlas maps which will have its own pool of summoner-focused modifiers. And of course, the Necromancer will be seeing a redesign to provide more useful effects for a larger spectrum of minion types. This will be revealed at a later date. The next build archetype being revamped is the Poison Assassin. In the past, this playstyle was a prominent build choice and very powerful in its day, but it has since fallen out of favour in quite a large way. In order to bring this playstyle back into the spotlight, 3.8 will add 5 new skills and 1 new support gem themed around the Poison Critical Strike Assassin playstyle. One of these new skills is Cobra Lash, which throws a copy of your weapon to chain multiple times between enemies. It has a built-in 100% chance to poison on a critical strike. And to better balance the offense and defense of these playstyles, there will also be a new buff available from the Assassin Ascendancy called Elusive, which gives defense and mobility bonuses. This buff is also the first that is designed to get weaker as it expires rather than simply switching off. So it'll be at its strongest when it's first activated, getting weaker over time. This will come alongside Assassin Tweaks that will give it new options for building around Critical Strikes hmm. and Poison. And the third okay, that's cool. archetype revamp for 3.8 is the Mine Saboteur playstyle. Mines are now thrown at range instead of placed at your feet, and when detonated they will now detonate in sequence with boosted power the longer the chain of detonations is. Um, to further differentiate hmm. mines from traps, activated mines will now reserve some mana while armed, and many mines will have auras which will apply to nearby enemies. On top of this, there will be three new mine skills and one new utility skill that will work with both traps and mines. In the footage is the new low-level mine skill Stormblast Mine, which is designed to expand the early game options of this archetype. Stormblast Mines make nearby enemies more vulnerable to damage and they gain increasingly powerful shockwaves when multiple are detonated in sequence. Both the Saboteur and the Mine-related notable passives are being reworked to provide mm. better support for Mine-focused playstyles. But shifting things away from Blight and Builds for a second, 3.8 is also an expansion with a large focus on allowing players to play content when they want to. An ongoing issue many players have been faced with is the pressure placed on things like doing master missions and engaging in previous league mechanics. I have opinions, but we're going to wait until the end. That you would not want to skip these encounters for fear of wasting them, but in being forced to do them right then and there, you would interrupt your current gameplay flow. Another issue identified was that in order to do master missions when you want to, you'd be forced to trade with other players for missing maps in order to do your daily quests on the Atlas. 3.8 is taking big steps towards solving both of these issues. Players will still sometimes encounter things like incursions and Einhar randomly when doing Atlas maps. However, the majority of encounters with master content is now deferred and can be done when you want to. There is a counter that stacks up of deferred master missions that can be built up as you play, with an additional two missions added every day even if you aren't playing. When you want to engage in the master content, mm. you can speak to that master and they will open the Zana's map device for you to insert a map of your choice so you can complete their mission right then and there in that map, guaranteed. The implications of this change are huge. It means that you can map with your buddies and let the Sulfite missions for Delve stack up. Then on the weekend, when you have some time for yourself, you can jump in, chain a bunch of Sulfite maps from your stacked up missions, and then delve to your heart's content. You can ignore Alva's That's missions fantastic. and let them stack up for a week, and then chain temples back to back when you have a bunch of time and want to farm for that white socket craft or corruption table. That's Whatever fantastic. Whatever you choose to engage, the key thing is that you'll get to choose when and how. Or not Alongside to. Alongside this monumentous <laughs> improvement, some previous leagues are also being improved. Betrayal's mastermind encounter, long relegated to being just simply not done, will now get a reward room for every member of the Immortal Syndicate, not just the leaders, oh, which would make it much shit. more tempting. Importantly, Syndicate state is now shared across all characters in the league, so you won't lose progress if you make a new character. Delve has also been rebalanced. <sighs> Still resets the whole board though. To reach deeper depths to challenge your character. There are a total of 69 fewer depths to reach endgame maps, and the rarer encounters have been made more common. And yes, Sulfite is now also shared across all characters in the League. Now the Legion League was a big yep. hit, so naturally it's being added to the game right from yep. the get-go. 
As detailed in a recent manifesto, monoliths will appear in the Temple of Atzawadal, delve, and they can also randomly appear in maps. Additionally, there will be a new scarab to add monoliths to your maps manually, and there'll be some sextant modifiers. Synthesis, on the other hand, was a divisive league, and as a whole, its mechanics are not being added to the core game. The boss fights, however, are being added to the game as unique maps in Zana's random mission offerings. This will bring Synthesis specific uniques back into the game through these maps. Cool. Though there is not currently planned to be access to the Synthesizer, Nexus, or Fractured items. Now, I'm okay with I that. Think that. Even without the Blight League and content, this would be a big update for the game. The overhaul to the Master Mission system is such a relief because the overwhelming list of things that's been building up in this game that could interrupt what I was doing was really starting to grate on me at times. Personally, I really want to do delves and temples and things like that. I just don't want to do them right then and there when I'm in the middle of my map a lot of the time. But wasting sulfite encounters or incursions always felt terrible. And being able to do a day of specific farming when we want to sounds so much better overall. That being said, when Chris first revealed that Blight was going to be a tower defense league, I cracked up laughing because it's so goofy, but it actually looks like a lot of fun. Also, the blighted maps really remind me of the olden days of Path of Exile mapping, where maps would be quite rare and we were excited about really crafting them up to try and get some higher level map drops. And this is the first league in a while that isn't really focused on endgame boss fights. Good bosses are one of my favourite things in PvE, but I'm excited for something wildly different with Blight's endgame instead being focused on high level Blight map mega tower defence missions. This could well recapture some of my childhood of playing custom games in Warcraft 3. It also seems like a really good move after Synthesis to make a crafting reward structure that will be much easier to read and navigate. Being able to see the oil crafts before committing to them and having them not be random is going to be quite a bit less stressful for players, I think. But that said, let me know what your initial thoughts are in the comments. That's it for now, I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching. Just real quick. And we were excited about really crafting them up to try and- Where was that? Where was well, that? Isn't he, just really boss he just said something. He just said something that I'm pretty well, sure is just like, Categorically wrong. Now, I'm really excited still. I am still really excited. It still looks really good, but I just need to just. We're excited about really crafting them up to try and get just, some higher level map drops. And this is the first league in a while that isn't really focused on endgame boss fights. Good Fucking what? <laughs> what? We haven't had endgame boss fights in the last six months! What fucking game are you playing? What? <laughs> what? What? When was the last time we had a boss fight league? It wasn't fucking Synthesis, I'll tell you that. And it definitely wasn't this league. When's the last one we had one that was like... Endgame boss fight? <sighs> Synthesis could have been... But they were so hard to find, I think, maybe, maybe, I guess you could say Synthesis was, at the very least you could say Synthesis was intended to be. Okay, yeah, sure. But at the very least, the league we just did didn't even have any bosses. What it had was trash that took slightly longer to kill than a normal rare mob. To try and get some higher level map drops. And this is the first league in a while that isn't really focused on endgame boss fights. Good bosses are one of my favorite things in PvE, but I'm excited for something wildly different. Okay, really excited, even more excited after Ziggy's video. It actually looks fantastic. I'm pretty excited about the whole thing. But we'll just we'll just ignore that one just completely factually incorrect part, and the rest of it was fantastic. Really love the idea of hard to get maps without fucking people's normal atlas progression. So these these particular maps being rather hard to get, wanting to roll them up, wanting to juice them, wanting to try and get your rewards out of them. Uh, whereas that will allow them that'll allow them to do the thing that I like where there's this slower map to run that you really want to try and juice heavy to try and get rewards out of, but without making everybody who wants to just 
Al can go their maps cry like a baby because they don't have maps to run. So I really like that. So if you're, yeah, it does look like it will slow down those maps, but also you'll be rewarded for juicing them up as much as possible. So I love, I'm loving that. Does it or does it not look like they fixed mines by turning them into traps with a different name? Yeah, like, okay, they're just now traps that you trigger, not really, like, I, I think I'm okay with that because I always kind of liked traps more than mines, um, but I already had traps to play, so why are you giving me mines that play like traps? I don't know. I don't know. I'm okay with it though. I'm okay with it though. I'm okay with it, but I, I just, I thought, I think it's a weird decision. I'm going to want to see how it plays first. I'm really tempted to make a, uh, a, a, uh, yeah, the, the chain bonus sounds really good. I might league start as mines. Now real quick. I just want to watch the first half. I just want to watch the first half of this, really closely paying attention to what I could find. Space pauses, right? Yep, cool. Pulsating just going to have a, a, a really good look at the everything. Okay, just real quick, is that or is that not Thane's girlfriend? <laughs> just saying, that looks like Thane's girlfriend. That's what that looks like. It's mindless husks who protect its core. So I build weapons, towers which conjure flames, chill the air, move the earth. Two new skills on the bar here, other than the potions looking different, which I just can't keep stop looking at. Oh, we Even didn't so, attack with them though. I didn't attack with mind. those either. And to the mighty go the spoils. No new skills on that bar. The source of this blight is out there. It's black tendrils reaching for us. We will seek it out. And purge it. Still no new skills. I'm fucking, I'm fucking, I was born ready for this. The only thing that concerns me is that mind stuff that it just, it feels a little bit odd because I know I'm looking at it and I think I'm going to like those mines way better, right? I'm going to like those mines far better than I like current mines. And the reason for that is I like traps and not mines and they just kind of made them into traps that you have to detonate yourself. And I just don't really, like we already had traps. So now we've just got two slightly different versions of traps. So like, I, I'm gonna like it more but I don't, I don't know why you would just sort of 
it feels like a bit of a, I think the word is homogenizing between traps and mines, just sort of, they're sort of just becoming the same thing. That's what it looks like. Uh, so a little iffy about that. I did not see anywhere in any of the trailers where the extra skill bar was. Right? I don't know if it's like a, a hold control or shift or alt or like a like a modifier button to get the second skill bar or whatever. I did not see that. I didn't see it anywhere. Um so I'm interested in how that works, but that's fine. Other than that, I'm really excited about these maps. I'm really excited about the league. That's going to be great. And uh, this will be fun. Uh, well, not them, but the amulets and gear putting extra shit on. Three power creep, but it's going to be fun power creep, so it's fine. All right. Well, that's all of that. Uh, yeah. All right. Now I'm now I'm sufficiently hyped. I want to leave the YouTube video on the note of I'm now hyped that I've now that I've watched the trailer but generally I'm hyped two or three days beforehand and um I miss specs just just throwing that out there <laughs>